You're going to talk about love? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll talk about love. Hi, my name is Harry Brownstein, and I'm with Columbine School of Botanical Studies, along with... Stephen Yeager, from the Columbine School mm -hmm. of Botanical Studies. And we're here on behalf of Mountain Rose Herbs to bring you a piece of this. The meadows at middle elevations in the Western Oregon Cascades. Here we are in the middle elevation mountain meadows here in the Cascade Mountains. And uh, we, we're going on to the next plant here. We have a beautiful rose, a wild rose, you might say. Or we might say wild rose. Wild? Rose. And uh, can you guess what family the rose plant is? Oh, in? I think I can. I think I can. How about you, Howie? Is it in the rose family? The rose family. That's right. And in the rose, botanically speaking, is the rose ace. Rose ace. Because remember, f families have the ending a c e a e. A c e. A c. Rose ace. Rose ace. Um, so we have these uh, native roses, and uh, Howie will speak a little bit to them here in a minute. But botanically speaking, they are. Uh, quite like the roses that we see in the garden. They have these uh, pinnately compound leaves. I uh, know they also have these uh, petals that are often colored, usually mm. white, pink, sometimes red. Roses have many stamens. The stamen is the male part of the flower and uh, the genus here is Rosa and you could say roses have many stamens. Is that the fuzzy stuff and the, the, yeah. there's a whole bunch of them and they're like yellow and there's like a, a little fuzzy thing? Yeah, and they're, and this, they're kind of like yellowish looking or yeah, kind of maybe fuzzy, yeah. So the rosa, the whole plant is astringent. The roots, the stems, the leaves, the flowers. The flowers are mild light astringent that you might use externally as a, as a, a facial astringent or as a component of a facial astringent. The leaves are much more astringent and can be a pleasure tea or a medicinal tea. Uh, the, bar, the chopped up stems could also be used, they're a little bit stronger. And I really do not recommend digging up wild roses for their roots as an astringent, especially when there are many other even weedy uh, rose family plants that are astringent. There's no reason to be digging up wild plants. Um, I, I will say that the berries or the rose hips are edible and you see it listed as edible. However, they do have a fine hair inside them that can cause a certain kind of digestive upset. Do you have something to say about that? Sure. So the, the rose hips like how he said, are the fruit of the, the plant and the, they're, they're covered in hair. And so when you eat them in an unprocessed form or eat them with the hairs on, they go through your digest, digestive tract and when you excrete them, they can be quite uh, unpleasant because of the hairs. They can cause an unpleasant um, feeling. I do believe that some of the names of this plant translated to English, roughly come out to itchy butt. But like when you see the, the rose hips from Mountain Rose Herbs or some of these other herb stores, they have those hairs removed. They're processed in a way to remove the hairs. And so hence it's uh, much easier on the digestive tract. And in fact, rose hips in general were not merely a, a major food component, more so as a survival food. Um, and also with the high, uh, they have a high vitamin C count as well. But um, what usually, when, when processed uh, by Mountain Rose Herbs, the hairs are removed. That's a really good thing to know. <laughs> well, another thing about Rose, it smells good. And you will have hear, you will hear uh, in and about social media and other places that Rose, the smell of Rose is used for love. But our friend Christopher Headley from England, is that Britain now? From Great Britain, yeah. Our friend Christopher Headley from Great Britain, when he was alive and came to visit us and went out in the woods with us, he was talking to us about roses and he said, you know, a lot of people think roses are for love, but really roses are for loving yourself. 
Christopher Headley was a great man. Mm-hmm. Great herbalist, great teacher. One time he came to visit us uh, at our house and he, uh, he built a fairy house in the backyard and he built it, took him all, you know, half an afternoon, built this fairy house. And I, I asked him, you know, what, what the fairy's going to do with that house. He said, well, if the house stays up for a long time, it means the fairies love you. And then he also said, well, if it falls down, it means the fairies love you. Well, that sure has been a lot of fun, Howie. Sure has. It's time for us to go, but be safe and interact with plants. We'll see you next time. And every Howie has its season.